Welcome to Can We Try a Try function for error handling. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video, we're going to talk about error handling. Um, so normally in Business Central, if an error occurs, or we if something happened, or we issue an error statement, then execution stop, we go back to the last uh, roll back the whatever transaction we have open and we go back to the last stable point of data execution meaning that you know if we're on a page and then we run something that fails then we go back and we're on the page again um, if if a report fails then we go back to where the report started from so like a a user interface anchor point where we are at at a steady place um, but sometimes you know we need to catch the error in code and we need to need to handle it and continue running our code back in the days the only proper way that that was done was basically with the code unit to run statement where if you encapsulate that in an if then you could actually catch errors that happen within the scope of the code unit that you ran. Um, so whenever we wanted to catch something, we ne we needed to encapsulate that into a, a, a code unit. That presented some new challenges, or some actually that presented some very old challenges because this was a while ago, uh, how to handle return values and stuff like that. So it, it, was, it was okay for like, Tried to post posting fails. We wanted wanted to handle that, but but in 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 smaller places it didn't really work well. Um, and let let's get to some code and and then let me explain what I'm talking about here. Uh, so I have started a new extension and just ready to to write some code here. So let's create a, a error that actually popped up at one of our customers the other day. So if I create a, um, let's create a JSON object. And in that JSON object, we, we add a field called amount. And we add a thousand to that. So that, that's, uh, that's a JSON uh, structure. You see, if we, we can actually verify how this looks so we can do uh, let's show this and then simply do format on the J and run this code. So we just wrote two lines of code. We added a property called amount to JSON object and then we are using a format command. We are actually getting the JSON structure uh, presented to us. So let's see how that looks. And come on, PC, there we go. So we got a adjacent structure. That's perfect, amount of 1,000. Excellent. So um, let's uh, then actually let, let's get the 1,000, get the amount out of this very complex JSON structure we have. So for that, we need a token. We need a JSON token. So JSON token is kind of the catch all. So that's, that's what, all elements in a JSON structure is a token, then depend on, depending on what kind of token it is that, that relates to the different either JSON object, a JSON array, or JSON value. So we can now say, okay, if j.get, and the key we want to get is, is amount, and let's get it into the token. If that succeeds, then begin, let's, uh, oops. I will never be good friend with the begin end thingy. I think the the um, the way it's it's done in in the editor is kind of built for curly brackets and not for the multi character uh, things. But um, anyway, so now we have T as the token that holds the value of amount. So what we can do is that we can say T as value let's create a decimal up here just so we have it in separate t as value dot oh and uh, okay let, let me 
not do this backwards, d equal, and then t as a value as a decimal. Perfect. And then let's change the message to the amount is percent one. So let's try this again. So so we have we built the JSON structure, then we get the token out of the JSON structure. We convert the token to a value, so a JSON value type, and then we get that as a decimal. So let's run this guy. Compiling, deploying, success. And let's see, the amount is a thousand, and notice that this is now a true decimal, so this is actually a formatted decimal. Uh, so that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. But, so so the problem with, with JSON is that there is no, you know, there's no style sheet, there is no, uh, uh, no type definition of JSON. So now I am, um, I'm changing the JSON. So the, for some reason, the JSON structure we're getting, we're getting a not available kind of thing in the amount field. And this is still valid JSON. There's nothing to change the key is still amount. So let's see what happens. We compile and deploy this again. Come on, BC. Maybe I should turn off the fact box. Oh, I'm I'm waiting here and I so the debugger caught this one. So let's just go through this. And we get a nasty unable to convert from Microsoft Dynamics nav runtime JSON value to Microsoft Dynamics nav runtime decimal 18. Kind of sloppy on uh, on on your message here, Microsoft. That because what is decimal eighteen? Yeah, that's the internal representation, but but that's not what I'm doing. I'm trying to create a JSON value to decimal. Anyway, so that didn't work. So so now we we got a problem because sometimes the source where we get the JSON for are doing crazy stuff like this. So how do we catch that? Well, we could start looking into, so let's take this as a string and do the evaluation ourselves and stuff like that. But but there is a better way. And that better way was right in the title of the video was that we can use a try function. So imagine that we take this guy and and let's make a function out of it. Um, we can even use the, the very clever AL code actions to get a procedure. So let's call this, um, uh, let's call this try decimal. How about that? Decimal. So What we have done is simply now we have created a function and put this into it. So if I run this again, I can run this again, we will get the exact same error because nothing has changed at this point. We just created a function that takes the two per two variables and will do um, the conversion. So in a second, we will get there the debugger caught the error and we can continue and we get the errors. Nothing has changed here. But what we can do now is that we can tell that we can add an attribute to the procedure. So we use a square bracket here and we can see that there's actually a bunch of attributes you can add. Um, some of them 
so so the intelligence here is super uh not clever so so not all of these can be put on procedure but the one that can be put on procedure or one of them anyway is the one called try function so what we can do now is that we can designate this to be a try function um if we're in c sharp um actually let's let's do that for a second yes yeah, so Save this as uh, test C sharp. Um, and now we are, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Now we're downloading Omni sharp and so on. Um, but we could have in, in our, oh, I don't want to clear a complete class. So we could have had a structure in here that says, says try um, and and have some code that ran in here. And if something failed, then we would use the catch to catch that error and handle it. So any error that happened inside our try uh, region would get caught and, uh, and we could handle it. Um, and you have to think about this the same way. Well, sort of the same way. No, I don't want to save this one. Um, so now this function is try function, and try function is special. So you see, if I say, okay, let's actually return the decimal here, because that will be easier, then we can't. We get an error saying that the signature of procedure try decimal does not, come on, does not match the signature required by attribute try function return value is expected to be of type none but that is actually not true that the this function is no longer a a procedure without a uh, return value so let's change this one bit and say if if and if we mouse over we can see that it's actually a boolean function now meaning that if this procedure succeeds then the function returns true otherwise we have a fail so it turns false um, so let's try this so if the function succeeds, tell us what the amount is. Otherwise, tell us that's not a number or value or amount. Let's see. Come on, BC. Published. There we go. Let me close some of all these old ones. And you can see that the debugger still is getting the error because this is failing. I'll say continue. And we can see that that's not a number. So the code continued. So, so let's look at that again. So we apply a try function attribute to the function, meaning that the, the signature uh, for this function change to return a value if execution completed and fit falls if there were an error. Um, we, we, could, we could try one thing. Let, let's see what happens if we ask for get last error text. Let's see what happens there. And I, let, let me actually try to do the step debugging here. So uh, see if we can, there's a breakpoint. See if we are fast enough for that.
So we got our breakpoint. So I'll do F11. So we have our JSON object. We get our token. We go into the try decimal. We try this. We fail. You see it blinked and then we got back to the same one. So I'll do F11 again. We exit out and now we are at the false part of this. We get a message. And I'll just F5 at this point since this is the last one anyway. So that's not a number. And in the last error text, we have the error message that, that we did not get, but we got a false. So we have an option to know what we're going on, but, but so kind of the same as, as when we're in, in C sharp, when we get a, we do the catch, uh, but slightly different nonetheless. So that's a try function. Be aware that there are limitations. Uh, the primary limitation here is that don't do database operation inside a try function because that won't work. Uh, so try functions are great for handling web services, handling stuff like this, where oh, I need to figure out. I'm getting, I'm getting this error in this specific spot, and I really need to. to to handle that in a better way. Uh, so what I'm doing here is, is very typical that, okay, instead of trying to validate crazy uh, things, because maybe this was not the case, maybe the case was that it was, you know, something like that, then, then suddenly, you know, validating a, uh, and a number might be easy to validate, but it might be a date or something more complicated. So encapsulate your 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 normal validation code in, in inside a try function and then handle the error. That that's um, in in many cases a, an easier way to do it. So anyway, that's a try function. Let me know in the comments below if you're using try functions or if you have uh, if, if this video perhaps inspired you to uh, use cases where this could, could help you. Uh, other than that, have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Take care.